Why, hello there, party people. It's me, a lady. And I am just going to babble for a minute because I've been thinking about something a lot lately and I wanted to make a short video on it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to ride around an Elden Ring because I was looking at this and I was thinking this is very pretty and I think that maybe this would kind of fit for the subject I was talking about because there's churches and I like churches. Do you like churches? I like visiting churches when there's like people not in them. That's my favorite time to visit a church, honestly. Like when there's people in them, nah, 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 you know, not, not as much, not as much of a thing. But when there aren't people in them, they're great. Uh, when we lived in Germany, I really liked visiting the castles and churches there. That was a lot of fun. But anyway, I've recently been thinking about like how there's a connection, or at least I feel like there's a connection between all of the different kinds of like mysticism. Not necessarily all the different kinds of religion, although I do also think that there is a connection there. Specifically, I'm talking here about mysticism and the mystic experience. I've been kind of investigating this more and more lately, and I've been investigating it for a while, really, but now I've been like kind of going a little bit hard, more hardcore into it. And I was reading this book, um, Ecstatic Confessions. Um, I believe it's Martin Buber is, is who it's by. I'm pretty sure it's Martin Buber. It is Martin Buber. And that's B-U-B-E-R. But um, something that was interesting to me in that book was that he was kind of comparing different mystical experiences. And I personally... It, this might sound kind of weird, but I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of a lot of, like, orthodox religion in a lot of ways. I'm much more of a fan... By the way, I have cheats on in stealth mode, so I'm just gonna... This is, pe is going to be a peaceful time. Thank you. But, um, like a lot of Orthodox religion, like, you know, if you're into that, that's great. But I've always been much more into, like, the, the mystical tradition. Um, and the more I've been kind of learning about these and, like, comparing them, like, the different kind of, like, like I had got, the different kind of, like, Christian mystical traditions as well as the various Islamic ones, I've been reading a lot about. Um, Sufism and stuff like that lately, as well as like Jewish mystical experiences. And I've been kind of relating that back to my own experiences, as well as like my recent experiences with sort of like um, Tantra or like Tantric practices, certain Tantric practices, as well as like meditation and things like that. And back to my own um, experiences. The thing I find very interesting is that if you compare a lot of these mystical experiences, there seems like there's a lot of commonality. Now, I don't necessarily mean that they are all exactly the same. I think you would have to ignore a lot of the subtlety involved in these various different traditions to think that they were all the same. But there are very similar through lines. And, you know, I was thinking about, um, like, in Sufism, they have this concept of, like, the unity of being, or, like, certain parts of Sufism have, like, this idea of, like, the unity of being. Kind of weird looking. Um, and I was kind of comparing that to things like Advaita Vedanta and, um, like, the kind of, like, the, the concept of monism and dualism as we understand it. And I've been doing a lot of, like, bhakti lately. I've been really engaging with bhakti because I've just found that it's very, um, it feels very natural to me to engage in bhakti. And bhakti, for those of you who don't know, is, like, like devotion. It's, like, a loving devotion towards, like, God, you know, and in my case, the aspect would be of Kali. And the thing that had been occurring to me is that I think there is a through line. I think that these are all connected. And I think that what we typically see, a lot of the differences in these mystical experiences come from people's tradition, their culture, or their own experiences, rather than the mystical experience itself. I mean, for instance, like Meister Eckhart, like, you wouldn't necessarily call him, like, a Sufi or, like, a Taoist, certainly. But, you know, like, I have this quote written down here from him. And this is from um, the Sermons of Meister Eckhart, which is like a book you can buy. It's a pretty good one. But um, this is Meister Eckhart. And Meister Eckhart, in case you don't know, is I believe 12th century German um, mystic, Christian mystic. Um, anyway, 
The eye through which I see God is the same eye through which God sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye, one seeing, one knowing, one love. Now, if I told you that was written by, for instance, Rumi, who is, you know, if you know anything about Rumi, you know why I would say that. But you know, Rumi is like this Persian poet who has a lot of mystical experiences while writes a lot of like mystical poetry. Y you could see what I mean when I say that sounds very similar to like other mystical experiences or like the people who talk about like, you know, melting away in their uh, from their own like singular self into like the greater like purpose of God or like the greater like idea of God. And you you know like I, I think in like my own prayer book for my, like the tantric prayer book I have over here there's like one where it says like I will melt into Kali's blackness, you know. And you think about like stuff like that and like Advaita Vedanta for instance is all about like realizing that you and Brahman, which we might call God, but you know, you and Brahman are like one and the same. Like you are not this body, you are the witness consciousness. And you know, it's something that's been just very interesting to me to think about because I think that there is this much deeper truth behind all this stuff. All like if, if you start really read like for instance if you really read the Tao Te Ching and then you start reading through Advaita Vedanta text or you start reading the Gita there's like a lot of very similar notions but they are not 100% the same now this leads me to my idea which is that I think mystical experiences connect us to one greater thing but I think and I wanted to find the, a good place to look at the Erd tree to sh kind of show this example like see it, it has one great trunk but as you branch up you can see there's all kinds of branches that all kind of go out in their own different ways i think the commonality among these different religious experiences these different mystical experiences points to a, a reality a truth like this but there is one greater thing but because of the the, the diversity of experience and because of the diversity of our own understanding, you get something much more like this. You you see it branch out. You And I think, in a lot of ways, the thing that makes this interesting to me is I think if all these realities are connected, if all of this different mystical stuff is connected, I don't think it really matters what particular tradition you decide you want to follow. I think, I think God is... And the divine, or God the divine, however we're defining it, you know, Allah, Brahman, or Brahma, you know, whatever we're defining, however we're defining it, I think, I think we can each choose a tradition that fits with us. And I think we can find the metaphors, the mythologies, the truth that really and truly comes to us and really fulfills us without necessarily like having to say that other people are wrong you, you know like if god is truly infinite then there are probably infinite ways or it makes sense to me that there are infinite ways to embrace that divinity you don't have to you know do things exactly the same way i do and you know or like someone else does and you know i think I will, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't think certain traditions at, overall were probably more correct in this, at least from my own experience and like the experiences I've read as I've been going more and more into this. And, you know, like with my own um, kind of like mystical moments, and I've had a few, well, more than a few now that I think about it, but like, like th this just feels like kind of a perfect metaphor for what i'm talking about just this just giant tree that spreads out in all directions like and you know what you to connect to this greater divinity i don't think you need to believe in god per se i don't think because i don't think you need to call it god i think that the buddhists you know like um like in various zen traditions or, or like you know you know early buddhism and all these other things i think there is still a connection to a deeper truth there and we might call that emptiness we might say that okay we realize that you know in some cases we might call it having no self or we might say we are realizing the true self and these experiences certainly are different enough that they are it is worth noting that they are different it's not like i think you can brush all of that under the rug i'm just saying that i think all of this kind of points to a higher reality, a, a, 
something that can connect and does connect all of us and we can choose to embrace or we can choose to try and get through the manifold um branches of theology and stuff like that like i, I think we we think too much in literal terms of truth we, we want to think too much about like for instance if you're a christian you might want to think too much about how the bible is literally true all the events that are recorded in it have literally happened and i don't think i think you really remove the heart of it the, the heart of this possibly just immense impossibly immense um spirituality that you can have and, and i i find this kind of disappointing because in, in a lot of western people like for instance i meet a lot of people who say they're christians but they, they don't seem to have very much spirituality they don't seem to really like try and connect and you know it's like i meet a lot of people who are muslim or i've met a lot of people who are muslim i've met a lot of people who are blah 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 blah, blah. it extended out to numerous different traditions and it feels like a lot of people are kind of missing this um deeper reality and I'll also say that I don't think you need to worry too much about telling people that this is the truth. You don't need to like try to push people in this direction or shove their faces in it. Because, you know, I think when we're ready for it, I think this kind of presents itself in a variety of ways, in a variety of very different ways. And I think that um, we should know that there's that, that there is that connection there. Like... You know, not everybody is um, a great person. Plenty of people out there are very, very bad people, in fact, maybe you might say. Or they, they do a lot of things that we we really shouldn't approve of and stuff like that. But what we should do is we should remember that, you know, that connection, that greater connection we have. And remember um, that we all make mistakes. You know, like, you know, Marcus Aurelius says, for instance, if someone is, like, unkind to you or they're criticizing you and they... um and they're wrong, just remind yourself of all the different times you've been wrong, for instance. And I'm kind of paraphrasing slash butchering that a little bit, but you get the sentiment. I, I think I think we can really look past a lot of our um, individual gripes with this kind of stuff. That's all very pretty. A, a lot of our individual gripes with this kind of stuff, and I think we can kind of move on to find something better and deeper and more um more glorious and, and you know like i said i don't think you need to believe in god for this. I, I think like I, you, know, you know when i was kind of in i almost want to say an in-between state but you know like i i wasn't necessarily focusing on god when i was first like really starting to meditate and stuff like that and i wasn't really focusing on this reality it just kind of presented itself and you know I think we can react to that in a lot of different ways. And I think that we can really get a lot out of this. But I think it's important to remember the connection we all have. I think it's important to remember that, you know, even like traditions that seem vastly different or possibly even, you know, like incompatible or even incompatible, you know, <coughs> crap, you know, um, I think we can really um, gain a lot from trying to understand this greater truth and kind of trying to see the mystical tradition and all of the beautiful parts of it for what it is. And yeah, I, I think I think, for instance, if you went back in time, if you you asked Rumi if he if his experience and the experience of a Hindu. You describe them. He might say they were the same, but he might say they're different. I, I mean, part of me thinks that one of the really good things about the age we live in now is that it's it's easier than ever to learn about different traditions, and it's easier than ever to see... Have I not gotten this one? I have not. And it's easier than ever to see, like this connection, this light that connects us all. And like, you know, like that love that underrides all things that, you, you know, it, it's an interesting comfort to think that on the one hand, we like, we don't have to be attached to anything, but on the, and on the other hand, we can like 
grow less attached to the world and whether we do, you know, we decide to embrace God or if we just decide to embrace a higher philosophy, like we can, we can transcend past a lot of our own suffering and a lot of the, the, the quibbles of the world. And, you know, like no matter where you look, you can look up and see the greater connection. I think, I think that there's, I don't know, there's just something very beautiful about that. And I just really felt like sharing it. I really felt like just kind of mentioning like these things that are on my mind lately. And I think we all can choose to connect together. And I, and I know that not everyone's going to want to do that. And a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you know, this is nonsense. And, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it does sound crazy to a lot of people, but um, really and truly there is, there just is this deeper connection that I think more of us could take advantage of. And I think I think it really connects us with all these different traditions and and we don't have to limit ourselves to any one place to find inspiration. We don't have to limit ourselves to any one place to experience love. I don't know. That's just what's been on my mind lately, and I felt like sharing it with you guys. Well, we'll see who sees it and who doesn't. Either way, I hope everybody has a great day. And if your day isn't going well right now, I hope it gets way better. So, I hope you all are doing good. Also, I like apples. I wonder what kind of magic cosmic apples this tree I'm talking about with connection would have. Would it be the sweetness of love apple? That sounds like a tasty apple. Okay, have a good one.